Now look, Nathaniel Hackett is a first-time head coach, and I do think that you have to be fair to somebody who is new on the job. But the end of that game on Monday night, he made an absolutely crazy decision to kick a 64-yard field goal at the end, especially considering the history of that end zone for those who have followed the Seahawks, especially considering the fact that I don't think a field goal longer than 57 yards has been made in um, Lumen Field slash CenturyLink Field history. But you also just signed Russell Wilson to a gargantuan contract in the offseason. Maybe you should use that guy, seeing as he is probably going to determine your future. And it's not exactly like you have the full backing of the new ownership group of the Denver Broncos. You were hired before those folks from Walmart and other places finalized the sale. Anyway, let's go back in time. Here is Nathaniel Hackett at his press conference after the loss that the Broncos had to the Seahawks, where he actually rationalizes the decision that he made to kick a field goal. Uh, no, sir. Nope. No, he knew we, where we had to get. Uh, I thought Javante made it amazing. Uh, why I was expecting to have to go for it on that down and distance, because uh, I believe we were about third and 14, third and 15. I thought Javante made an incredible play and put us in the field goal range, the mark that we were looking for. Can you, uh... you heard him right there. The mark that we were looking for. <laughs> Do you buy that? I mean, <laughs> I know it was a third and long situation, but when you find yourself in fourth and manageable with the way that the Seahawks are moving the football at the very least one you should have rushed your field goal team out there to kick the field goal as quickly as possible seeing as you had all three of your timeouts there that situational awareness that's learned over time if you are a head coach Nathaniel Hackett's a first-time head coach doesn't have a whole lot of guys on his staff with veteran expertise that makes sense what they did did not and I think part of that is on Russell Wilson, who is a guy that we have noticed in Seattle has drawn a lot of delays of games over the course of his career. I used to think it was Pete Carroll. Now I'm starting to think that maybe this was a Russell Wilson thing, letting the play clock dwindle and getting called for delay of games. I lost my mind on it once. I think it was after a Rams game because it just happened every fucking game. It felt like delay of game, delay of game, delay of game. Well, Maybe Russell Wilson needs to take a little bit more ownership in this partnership he's talking about and call a timeout there or get his ass off the field so that the field goal unit can come on. Instead, he stood out there kind of like absentmindedly while 30 seconds ran off the clock until they eventually called a timeout at the very end. It gave the Broncos essentially only one way to win the game. They had to hit that field goal. Anyway, we'll get to some of your comments. I appreciate them. Twitch.tv slash Galan says, I don't know why I made this exclusively to Twitch as long as I did. You can also watch it YouTube.com slash Paul Galan. Here is Nathaniel Hackett yesterday. And this is not a good look for Nathaniel Hackett. Not great. 24-hour rule. 24-hour rule. Waste time jumping into the fire there. Yeah. You know, with coaching, second-guessing and everything. I, I think the big one that it comes down to, Coach, is uh, fourth and five with Russell Wilson or 64 yards with Brandon McManus. Yeah. You know, looking back at it, we definitely should have gone for it. Um, just not, not, you know, one of those things you look back at it and you say, of course we should go for it. We missed the field goal. Um, but in that situation, we had a plan. I mean, we had a plan. We knew that the 46 was the mark. Uh, we were third and 15, I think, third and 13. I'm more upset about that play before it to lose yards, to be able to, you know, Getting that there would have definitely uh, been better to be able to call that same play and get extra yards. But um, he dumps it out to Javante. Javante makes a move, goes a lot farther than I think we had anticipated. We were expecting to go for it on fourth all down. All right, blah, 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 blah. Look, I am all for people owning their mistakes, admitting when they've made them, especially in football where these guys are such hard asses and are going to say in press conferences generally, we did what was in the best interest of the team. But come on. <laughs> this is not the place to second guess yourself. Your first Monday, technically Tuesday press conference after a game. Even if he's right and saying, yeah, we probably should have gone for it there instead of kicking a 64 yard field goal, despite Brandon McManus having the like, you can't essentially after your first day on the job, question your performance publicly the day after you can't if you want to keep your job long-term. 
imagine my first day in Seattle or my first day in Houston. At the end of the show, I say, you know, I don't think I had the right leading topic. I don't think I had the right takes on anything. In fact, everything I did over the last three hours was bullshit. Imagine if I said that after my first show. Would you have confidence in me lasting long term? And you're a listener in this situation. What if you're the boss? You're feeling even fucking worse. And again, the Broncos ownership did not hire Nathaniel Hackett. They did not. Now, we've heard Russell Wilson publicly endorsed Nathaniel Hackett, but he essentially gave a quote with, I believe in Brandon McManus. I believe in Nathaniel Hackett. I believe in everything he said at the very end of it. Good God. You can't do this stuff second-guessing yourself publicly unless you have a track record, a resume. Someone like Lovey Smith, who I'm covering in Houston, he could get away with second-guessing himself. By the way, he didn't. He didn't. He should have, I thought, second-guessed punting against an Indianapolis Colts team that certainly will not play as poorly as they did Sunday the next time that they play the Texans. This is probably your only chance to actually beat the Colts. He also probably should have second-guessed this decision that he had to not kick a field goal instead to punt from the Colts' 36-yard line, given that they have a kicker in Kaimi Fairbairn, who's had a 61-yard field goal over the course of his career, who's 18 of 28 over the course of his career from 50-plus. I don't know. That's just me. But Lovey Smith has been in the league for a while. This is Nathaniel Hackett's first go-round. And whether you're a Broncos fan, you're probably feeling, what the fuck is this guy doing? Owner, thinking to yourself, Jesus, what's his buyout in case things hit the fan? Or you're a player. Forget Russell Wilson for a second. Would you feel confident if this guy is second-guessing himself immediately after the first game where he's making big-time decisions? And look, he could grow on the job. He could theoretically get better. Let's not write Nathaniel Hackett's post-career script right now. But most people across the league are probably going to say to you, this guy is dead last among coaches in the NFL. Dead last. Is that fair? Probably not. But that's what happens, and especially when you kind of compound it like this. Now, if Hackett was going to admit he made a mistake, this is something you do privately and you keep it in-house. I think you tell your players about it, and guess what? They will respect you for it. They might question you a little bit, but when you're doing this publicly, the whole world is seeing it, and guess what, Nathaniel Hackett? You just, you haven't done enough to earn any benefit of the the doubt. Everyone is going to question you from here on out. 